Hello there, it's John Krasinski uh, for Pittsburgh Soccer Now um, for Pittsburgh Sports Live. Um, with me today, Russell Cicerone, Pittsburgh Riverhounds, uh, attacker, kind of multi-position really, played a little bit wide, played a little bit up top last year, but the bottom line was that uh, you really produced, you had a great season in 2021, came through as team's leading goal scorer. Russell, uh, first of all, back in camp, about a week and a half now. Uh, how you doing? How's that going? It's going well. I think uh, the team's progressing really well. Um, uh, we, we're, we're starting to learn the, the ways that uh, the that Bob wants us to play, whether it's in transition, whether it's with us having the ball, and how we how we want to how we're wanting to defend. Like all all aspects of the game, we're uh, we're definitely growing as a group. Yeah, unfortunately, let's. Uh take a look back at 2021 briefly it was kind of a bittersweet finish I mean you had the great individual season the team did pretty well I mean that fourth place finish you had to start out on the road in the playoffs but then you didn't even have that opportunity mm -hmm. due to the uh, unfortunate COVID positive situation uh, with the Riverhounds but just take us back to that to that week what was it like to kind of go through that and you know I'm sure you probably never want to deal with that again yeah, no, during that week, there was a lot of uh, anxiety with myself throughout the team of what, what like the unknown of what was going to happen, how we were going to get this game played. And uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was extremely stressful. We were thinking of the, with the guys that, that weren't positive, if we were going to be able to travel and play with a, a limited roster and stuff like that. But probably rightfully so the league said too close of contact and stuff like that. So we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do that, but uh, it was definitely extremely disappointing because uh, yeah, I, I, we, we didn't get that victory that we needed in the last game, but we were towards the end of the season, we were playing really good. And I think we were taking, t taking a, a strong momentum into playoffs and, and uh, I doubt anybody in, else in, in our conference or the, would want to come against us. So it, it was definitely disappointing. That was definitely the feeling. It was uh, momentum was definitely in your favor. Um, I know you, for you personally, the season itself, um, probably the longest season you played, right, in your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the year before, a couple years before, we were dealing with the COVID stuff, uh, a lot of COVID stuff. So the, the, the season uh, were getting limited. But uh, yeah, that was, it, was, it was a long year. But it, for me personally and for the team, it was, it was a pretty successful year right until what happened at the end. Yeah, just your, your success to, with the Riverhounds. Obviously, the number of goals sort of came out of nowhere. I mean, we saw shades of it. Uh, in St. Louis, but, and obviously in your college career and with Michigan Bucks, I mean, you, you, you produced, that's for sure. I mean, I think um, in Michigan, you had 20 goals in 22 games or something like that. And, um, you know, and at the UB, uh, at University of Buffalo, you, you did the same that kind of rate of goals. But, you know, when you went first got to the professional level, um, you know, I'm sure it took you a few years to kind of adjust and kind of find yourself as a goal scorer. Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, definitely. And uh, just uh, I, I played in multitude of positions throughout my professional year, whether it was out wide as a winger in like a 4-3-3 or as a winger in a 4-4-2. Uh, I played a bit in the midfield. Uh, this this year was really the first year that I played a, a lot as a forward, even though I did bounce around, played wide. I played in the midfield a few games as well. But uh most of my time playing as a forward this year, that was, that was probably the first time it's happened. Yeah. I mean, Bob, Bob talked a little bit about that when I spoke with him yesterday, your coach, Bob Lilly, he, you know, he said that you did spend a lot of time on the wing your first couple of years professionally and maybe didn't have those opportunities even to kind of do what you did last year in Pittsburgh. And that was, you know, make those timely runs, um, you know, or kind of anticipate the uh, balls coming through or even just finding those, goal scoring opportunities closer and in and around the box. Right. Um, is that something that you, you're going to look, look to continue to do? I mean, I know the additions of Dane Kelly and then you have Dequa there and there's some other forwards in the mix as well. I mean, where do you see yourself in 2022? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I don't know if Bob likes to be playing as like the out and out striker. So having those two guys come back hope, and Dequa back healthy, um, allows me to play in that role a little bit, maybe underneath. And 
I'm a, I can, I, what Bob likes about me is my movement and stuff like that. So that if, if, if I can make those runs from the midfield or from a little bit withdrawn a position, it's a little bit more unexpected and I can, I, and I'm good at finding those spots in the box where the ball is going to land and getting myself into good areas. What, what goes into making those timely runs? What's what, you know, maybe what's helped, helped you progress as a player to, to do those type of things. What, what goes into that? Yeah, for, for me, it's a lot of like counter movements, drifting away to go a certain way. And then like uh, a lot of change of pace. So maybe starting off slow, trying to lull defender to sleep and then uh, uh, using a little bit of a burst of speed into an area where I know the ball probably is going to be or, or should be. And uh, just just finding those weaknesses, finding the, the soft areas of the defense. Is that as a professional, is, is that something that you've really learned more later like now as a as a professional as you progress or is it something that you you always looked at as no a, i've always had, i've always had a, yeah i've had a knack for finding for finding it uh for finding the areas like that or like uh being able to read what the ball is going to do if it's going to come off somebody a certain way so i've always had that but uh i think definitely uh bob's really he really stresses how important the runs are into the box and what kind of movements we need to do so I, i've definitely grown under him yeah, so I, I'm going to throw out a couple of teammates your way. Obviously, this adding Dane Kelly, it's just we we see now that this attacking unit, and there might be some more players added, obviously, as we go forward. But but right now, it's a, you've got Kenny, Canardo Ford, you've got Kenny, um, Alex Dixon, Dane Kelly, Albert Dequa, um, just to name a few, Danny Griffin, obviously, central midfielder. But, you know, when you look at those guys and you look at this attack, um, how do all of you complement each other? And, adding additional players like Dane Kelly, um, Yang maybe as well. I mean, what, what do all of you do in terms of complementing each other? I'm, I'm curious about what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, well, the, uh, a big thing that Bob stresses within the team is uh, like working for each other and like making runs for each other. So you might, so somebody might make a hard run and they should be expecting to get the ball, but it, it opens up space for somebody else. And I think all, uh, pretty much all of our, our attackers are willing to make that run to to sacrifice open space for for another for a teammate and uh i think that's extremely important a lot of unselfish guys and then i mean having played a year uh, i i played with dequa in, in a decent amount in st louis but then having played a year with uh, uh alex and uh, kenny uh I, th I think we got a really good understanding of what kind of runs i'm going to make and what kind of runs dixon's going to make and uh, kenny's a fantastic passer of the ball i mean i mean all three of us are pretty good passers of the ball so we were able to find each other and if we wanted to feed or if we wanted to space and, and every single time we play together the chemistry is always going to keep growing that way and it's just it's only going to get better yeah i mean i was going to ask that was going to be my follow-up question really it's just this having this core group and then you can count the you know the midfielders and the the, the center backs as well and the defenders mm -hmm. i mean having this core group of guys coming back i mean or through the off season, that must have been nice for you to see see all that coming together so quickly. Yeah, it's it's definitely an extremely strong squad uh, that that we brought back in, and uh, I think uh, the the staff has done an excellent job of complementing it with with the players that they have brought in, the new guys that they have brought in, and uh, you can see already we're like a week and a half in. You can see that the Dane Kelly how how good of a goal scorer he has, just his movement and. Uh, um, just finding finding those spaces like we like we said uh, in front of the goal and uh, just and even his, his link up play and everything you can tell he's a, he's a top he's a top player and it, it's really good to see that we're just we're just growing in talent and growing in uh, uh, what we want to do as a team. Yeah, I mean, and in addition, you know, just coming together. Actually, let me take a step back. So the off season, you know, everybody's kind of coming back and re-signing. Uh, was there communication with a lot of the teammates or did you use the off season kind of to go kind of in your own space and just kind of prepare for the off season? What was that like? Yeah. So, so my off season, obviously I, I kept in touch with, uh, most of the team. We had a group chat and, and whatever. Um, but, uh, didn't really get into specifics about, uh, like, um, uh, Oh, look who we're bringing back. Look, we're looking strong or anything like that. Most of the guys just either go home, be with their family or, or travel a little bit. So uh, 
for me, I was just more focused on um, being with my family a bit. And then I trained a decent amount in the, in the off season. And uh, uh, so just getting my body ready for the upcoming season. And then, uh, you know, Bob is always going to have a plan in, in preseason to get everything sorted out. So, and that's what we've been doing. You, you go back to Michigan in the off season. Yeah, I was, I was bouncing back between Michigan and here and in Pittsburgh a lot. So, uh, I was, I was kind of in both spots, but yeah. Uh, so yeah. in in terms of, you just mentioned, you know, Bob, uh, as a coach, I probably asked you this last year, but I love to ask this question again. I mean, just what's it like to play for uh, a coach who's had the success he's had, but also has kind of given you seen things in you to help you develop as a player. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the opportunities he's, he's given me. Uh, and uh, it's, it's definitely uh, it's uh, playing under him has definitely helped me grow as a player. He's extremely demanding. Everybody knows that, but in a good way. And uh, he always, he always gets the best out of us whether we're angry at him or not, but he, he's always going to, uh, he's always going to get the best out of us and, 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 and push us to keep working hard and, and do the things that are going to help the team succeed, which in turn helps us um, succeed personally. I'm sure you're looking forward. I think it's early in the season too. The Hounds will be playing at Detroit city FC. Um, I'm sure you're excited about that. Yeah. I, I, I think my parents are a little bit more excited than I am. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm definitely very excited to, uh, I probably have a, a lot of friends and, and family coming to the game, so it should be exciting. Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting to see what the, they, you know, how that franchise will adapt and, and jump in with the USL championship level. Um, but, do you know any players over there? Um, I know I, I trained with two guys in uh, the offseason, uh, and I played with Brad Dunwell in the Vardar Academy growing up. He was at uh, Oklahoma City last year, and he's been one of their recent signings. So, uh yeah, he's been a good friend of mine. We we communicated a decent amount, so I'm excited to play him as well. Yeah, that should be a fun new uh, team, not too far, and you know, get you to, to go back home at least for, for that game. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so heading into 2022, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of optimism. The first week of camp, I'm hearing a lot of great things. Um, what are your What are your expectations going forward with this with this team? Um, what are, what are your thoughts on this year, year ahead? Yeah, I mean, with the, with the group of guys that we brought back uh, and then the pieces that we've added, uh, I think uh, uh, th that just just like last year with the momentum that we had going into playoffs, that we were looking to go win a USL championship. And, and obviously that's the goal right from the beginning. Uh, the coaching staff laid that out. The uh, Kenny as a captain laid that out for us. That that's That's the goal of this year. And uh, I know early in the season last year, we dropped a few games. We dropped, dropped some points early in the season. We started off slow and we stressed that going into this preseason, we can't have that kind of start again. So uh, I mean, I mean, they've, they've laid it all out for us. We just need to keep working every, each week and, uh, and, uh, and win some games. And another exciting wrinkle is the, the facility out at Montour is uh... I guess mostly, well, at least from a training perspective, to be able to get inside. Um, what's that been like, and what will that be like being part of this group of players that will be able to use this new state-of-the-art facility as it as it really becomes uh, the 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 home base for the club? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's really coming together. It's a great facility. It's a, it, it's a huge building, and then multiple fields around it. I mean. It, they're putting a lot of work into it and when it's finished it's going to look really great but uh luckily we're still while the, a little bit of construction is going on we're able to get in there and 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 use the indoor field uh and it's a great field it's big and uh it's very fun playing in there yeah i mean the winter so far the winter hasn't been too harsh to you guys i mean you're out at highmark when you can but you can go there um right. and not too harsh on your bodies that sort of thing right yeah, so whenever it's snowing or if, if the temperature drops a little bit too much, then we'll just head uh, over to Montour and, uh, and we have a great place to train. All right, uh, Russell, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been great chatting with you. Hopefully I'll see you on the field um, after a match soon or before a match, but uh, really appreciate your time with us here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. Um, good luck with the, the beginning of the season, the preseason, and I'm um, sure it's going to be an, a pretty exciting campaign and the fans are definitely looking forward to seeing you guys. All right. I appreciate you very much. Thank you.
All right, Russell, have a good one. All right, you as well. Thank you. All right, all right thanks.